What you're seeing here is the Bitcoin chart and these green arrows that you see on the screen are live signals that were sent from my algorithm basically telling you to buy. And you can see here that since 2024, we have had basically a 100% hit rate of calling a local bottom or the actual bottom of Bitcoin. Now, this also works for most of the bigger coins in the market as well. If you look at where we got the signals here recently and you look at pretty much every coin in the market, basically every coin hit a bottom over here. So you can use this algorithm on most coins. And so far this year, it has had a basically 100% hit rate, okay, on Bitcoin. Now I've been using this algorithm for about three years now to buy the bottoms of the crypto market. And I wanna teach you some things about what I've learned creating and using one of the most accurate algorithms in the market to be a successful investor, to buy at low prices and ultimately sell them at higher prices because we also have a selling based algorithm. But I wanna talk in this video about the buying side of things. So the secret behind being able to buy bottoms consistently with this algorithm that I designed is that we use good data and we actually understand how a crypto market works. And that's where people go wrong. Most people, when they're trying to time their entries and their exits in and out of the market, they're using bad data. They don't have a strategy and they don't really understand how the market works. And so in this video, I wanna teach you what is good data? What strategy could you follow? And how does the market actually work? How should you understand the market to work so that you're able to get into the market at the right times? Because you can see here, we've been rallying recently. The bottom's pretty much in. If you didn't buy the bottom here, there's something wrong in your system. And I want to help you in this video figure out what is going wrong in your system and how you can fix it to be a better investor. So average tools lead to average results. On Twitter at this bottom, I saw so many different people using so many different data sets and ways of analysis to say that the bottom wasn't it. And I find that most people are using average tools which don't really work. Now here's four examples of things that I saw on Twitter this month of ways of analysis that I just don't think works properly. The first one is fractals of prior price action. So what people will do is they'll basically take a prior example of price doing something and then they'll see that the price right now is doing half of it and they go, oh, well, it's gonna do the same thing, right? It's a fractal, it's gonna repeat. Fractals are super, super overrated. The problem with fractals is that they rarely work. Sometimes you'll draw a fractal and sometimes it'll work, but your hit rate is really, really low. And also price action today is driven by completely different variables and news events and, and people participating than the price a month ago or wherever the fractal you know, you're using is from. And so you can't really draw too much of a comparison because what's happening is different. What it's being driven by is different, different news. The second one that I see people getting wrong is they try to look at the strength and the weakness of the market to pick a bottom. So for example, people will draw, and this happens all the time. They'll draw like this support level and they'll see the price broke below the support and they'll say, oh, look, we broke the support. Price is really weak. We're probably going to go a lot lower. And if you go on Twitter, most people were saying that we were going to go a lot lower. They were like, oh, well, this is sort of a bad support level. We got to go all the way down to here. And look, prices rallied massively. How could anyone have known that this was going to be a fake out if you were going to use price action to dictate your decision of saying that, oh, well, it's not gonna bottom here because it showed weakness. Bottoms happen when you don't think it's gonna be a bottom. And the market, most of the time when it hits a bottom, does so when it makes the price look like it's weak. You want to shake out every last seller that you can before the price is gonna eventually go up because it is only after everyone else has sold that there is no one left to and price can then obviously go up. And if you have a look at every bottom recently, it always happened after a break of a support level. You had the support here, broke below, and also here. It breaks below support and then that's the bottom. And so that's what keeps happening to people. They keep getting shaken out of the market because they use the strength and the weakness of price action to dictate what they do. They go, oh, it's so weak. I'm shitting myself. Oh, I should sell. When you should be buying, you should buy the break of support in a bull run. That's just how it works. The third thing that people do is they use Twitter sentiment. And this is also a terrible idea. The problem with Twitter sentiment is that some people are really smart and their opinions are worth listening to. And some people are stupid and they should be done the opposite of. And when you aggregate in your mind what people on Twitter are saying, you're aggregating the really smart ones who are correct and the really dumb ones who are wrong. And you're not able to separate it mentally. And so when everyone's bearish on Twitter, maybe it was everyone smart that was bearish. Maybe they were correct. If you follow smart people and everyone's scared, maybe they're right. If you follow lots of dumb people and they're all bullish, maybe they're wrong. It's just a very inaccurate, informal method of analysis. And I don't think Twitter sentiment you can use. I've tried to use Twitter sentiment to know when to do things. It just doesn't work. I wouldn't use it. If you can go onto a platform where they like aggregate 
aggregate all the sentiment and they create data around it, maybe that would work. But just you informally doing it yourself doesn't work. And the last thing that people do that doesn't work is they try to use news to guess where the bottom is. The reason I don't like using news to guess where a bottom is, is because every single time there's a bottom, when you use news, you're using an entirely new set of data in order to try to guess what to do. So for example, when we buy the bottom, it's the same thing every time. It's just a green arrow, right? It's a repeating green arrow that tells you when to buy. When you're using news, every bottom has a different set of news. It's like an entirely different game each time. You know, at this bottom, it was all about Germany selling its Bitcoin and Mt. Gox unlocks, right? That was this bottom. And then over here, it was something else. And then back in 2020, it was COVID. And you know, at every bottom, there's a different set of news events, which is driving that price. And so it's really tricky because you have to be able to recognize a different news bottom, if that makes sense. It's so much easier just to use data sets that are the same every time. For example, one of the ones that we use is called a whale heat map. If you have a look here, you can see that every time we got a big shade of blue, it was the bottom. Very simple. You got the big shade of blue, big shade of blue, big shade of blue, and then the big shade of blue, right? It's consistent in the sense that when it's a bottom, it does the same thing every time. News, it's different. And that's why it's tricky. And that's why, you know, if, if you're trying to use news to time a bottom, like, okay, when is the market really scared and none of them are looking at the bullishness of what's coming? You have to be able to do so many different things. You've got to be able to use second and third order consequences to guess, is the future going to get brighter from today? Okay, then the price is probably going to go up. You have to be able to analyze narratives. It's a huge skill barrier to using news. So this is the four average tools that I've seen people using in order to try to pick bottoms online. And I'm gonna talk about method that I use and why it works and why a lot of people are having success following my system. So let's get into that. And again, guys, it's a 100% hit rate for 2024 if you assume local bottoms and actual bottoms. It hasn't been 100% throughout its whole history. It's about a 75, 80% accuracy. So don't go right hate in the comments like, it wasn't 100% in 2023, fuck off. I'm talking about 2024. Instead of formal sentiment gouging on Twitter, what I like to do is I like to gouge sentiment from the most accurate source possible. Twitter is too noisy. There's too much noise. With data, you need to be able to separate the signal from the noise. And when you use funding data, you're able to do this because funding data is the most pure representation of what the average market participant is thinking and feeling in the moment. It's not a predictive tool. It's a tool that you use to know what people are thinking and feeling right now. I can show you a website here that has funding data, aggregated funding rate. Now this isn't the best source of funding data, but it's the fastest one that I can show you. When funding is negative, it's usually a bottom. And when funding is massively positive, it's not actually a top, but it's a sign of people being very bullish in the market. You can see that near tops, it, it gets quite aggressive here, but it's better at picking bottoms in the market. You can see here, it also spiked red temporarily, but basically funding data is the representation of what everyone is thinking and feeling in the derivatives market. I don't want to get into a full explanation of funding data because it's quite complicated. But to put it simply, most people lose money trading. And so if you can find out what most people are doing when they trade and you do the opposite of them, you can make money. And that's how our data works. So what we also aim to do with my approach that I've just shown you is we want to aim to catch 80% of a trend consistently instead of inconsistently being perfect. A lot of the time I see people online trying to be perfectionists with their entries and exits. They're scared of an extra 10% downside, but they're not afraid of missing out on 100% upside. If you think the price is near a bottom, you should buy because aiming to save 10% temporary downside is going to massively increase the risk of you actually just missing the whole uptrend. If you think the price might only go a little bit lower, like let's say it was here and you thought it might only go a little bit lower, you should buy here. You have massive risk because what if the price goes up a lot? And that's what we aim to do with this algorithm. We're not trying to buy bottoms as much as it has bought bottoms. We're not trying to sell tops. We're trying to capture 80% of a move. We want to buy when the price is low enough that even though it might go down a little bit, it's okay. It's not a problem. And this is how the best investors think. They're not trying to capture the entire move. They're trying to get the meat of the move. If you read the best investing books from hundreds of years ago, from the best market speculators of all time, they all talk about the idea of capturing six eighths of a trend. First eighth, don't worry about. The last eighth, don't worry about. It's the middle six eighths that you want to capture. Now, we also focus on buying peak fear and we don't really care about what is the causing the fear itself.
itself. At every single bottom in the market, there was a, a story for why the price was going so low. There was fear. There was some sort of things that people were scared about. I don't give a fuck what the fear is. I just care that there's enough of the fear. Because people get so caught up in the news of why the price is doing what it's doing, it blinds you from being able to recognize opportunities because you start to believe what people are saying. At the bottom, everyone's going to tell you all these reasons why you shouldn't buy. And if you listen too carefully, it's going to actually influence your decision making. We don't care what the news is doing. All I give a fuck about is the funding data negative? Is the market bearish? Are we near a bottom? And you know, like, is there confluence with our data sets? And that's it. That's all you need. Did the algo print a triangle? Yes or no? No? Okay. Not doing anything. Makes it so much more simple than what other people do. We buy using data that is the same at each bottom, not different each time. And I already went over what that means. When news agnostic, the data is what's important. News doesn't matter. The price is the news. The price will reflect the news. You don't need to look at the news. We identify the herd positioning and we do the opposite of them. So again, funding data. If they're all shorting the market because they're all thinking it's going down, I can guarantee you it's not going down much further. We look for confluence amongst different data sets to determine conviction. This is not the only tool that we use. I would like to show you guys actually some of the new tools that we've been using, which are really, really accurate. One of them I already showed you just before. For example, whale heat map. This last bottom that we had was one of the most obvious bottoms that we've seen in years. And let me show you why. We had a very clear whale accumulation. The blue is whales accumulating, okay? I'm not gonna get into how the data works, but essentially blue is good and red is bad. <laughs> Pretty simple. This is a very easy tool to use, just as easy as this one that prints signals. We also have the Teva ratio channel. This one also printed a signal. So if you have a look here, you can see that every time the ratio dropped below a certain threshold, we got a signal and it was the same sort of signals as what my algorithm was giving. So we would use these tools in confluence. The more different data sets that are saying the same thing, the more likely what they're saying is going to be correct. If you only have one data point to support your opinion, you're probably wrong. If you've got a number of different data sets saying that this is the correct answer, then it's probably more likely to be correct. Let's have a look at the realized profit and loss. So you can see here that we always have big spikes near at least local bottoms or even near the bottom of the trend. But uh, this one isn't necessarily as useful. We've got a couple more here that I wanted to show you. Let's have a look at liquidity account. So you can see here that I think what this one is measuring is the amount of long liquidations. So from memory, that's what it is. But basically, whenever you have a lot of longs getting liquidated, obviously one side of the market is getting absolutely destroyed. And markets tend to move in the direction to fuck over the most amount of people. And if you just completely obliterated one side of the market, the only thing left to do is to destroy the other side. And so that's generally when we have bottoms. You can see here we had a massive spike. You can see here, massive spike, bottom, massive spike right here. And this was at this drop. Now the price did go lower and this is why confluence is important. If you had one data point, maybe you wouldn't buy it, but then you had Hunter Algo signals and you had a big liquidation just recently and you have a liquidation here too, then you would, you know, maybe enter with more conviction there. And you can see again here, another one, right? So that's most of what I wanted to show you. As you can see that this is the emotion cycle that the market goes through. And I've showed this already a few times, but you know, we go from the market being really fearful and it being a good buy opportunity to the market being really greedy and then the market being fearful. And it's just this repeating cycle. And at each bottom and each top, there's a story for why it hit the bottom and the top. There's a story behind why people are really scared or really bullish and why they're bullish, why they're bearish doesn't matter. What matters is that they are bearish or bullish. The news doesn't matter. It's all about the positioning of the market. And I think in crypto, the most important and most useful way to time entries and exits is to look at the positioning, look at the sentiment. What are people doing? And then do the opposite of them. And if you like the data that you've seen here, I actually am building a custom platform, which is going to have all of the data sets that my team uses and people who follow my stuff use to get good entries and exits. This is going to be a really cool platform. It's going to be sort of like Glassnode or Nansen, but it's just going to be with the data that we think is useful. The problem with a lot of these these platforms is they give you all the data and most of it's shit. I'd rather just give you guys the data that works. Like why sort through the dumpster when you can just go straight to the main meal in the restaurant? So this will be coming out soon. If you want access to the Hunter algorithms, I have an automated signal service where the signals get sent to a telegram room. So if you want to just literally not spend any time on crypto and just use this algo to know when to buy and sell, it works on most coins. Look, here's ETH. See if the signals load. You know, bottom, bottom, bottom. It's even more accurate on ETH, actually. Solana, bottom, bottom, bottom. You'll find the link if you want to join in the description below.